Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Custom Apparel Startups Podcast. My name is Mark Stevenson from Cold Essay. And this is Mark Vila. Um, I'm not telling you where I'm from today, though. Yes, because yeah. both of us are from Cold Essay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to change the way maybe we start the podcast. Yeah, you know what? I want to I want to I want to take a side note. OK, just sure. to derail our process. Yeah. Um, and remind everybody, as we are continually reminding ourselves, mm -hmm. that all of our different brands are still Cold Essay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are people mm -hmm. that go to the Digital Heat FX website and they buy a printer and they get through the whole process and don't realize that it's Cold Essay. Mm -hmm. There are folks that get in Vonce Embroidery Machines or DTG Digital Brand, Director of Garment Printers. Um, we are also uh, the Pro Spangle Machine, Cam's Rhinestone Machine, the Spangle Elite. Um, and the Coleman and Company e-commerce site. We've got where the patch kit. Yeah. You know, we, we have all these great brands that are underneath the Cold Essay umbrella that we do, I think, a really good job on communicating on. Yeah. Not always letting everybody know, hey, by the way, yeah. and we're you Cold know, Essay. You know, you think about it, Ford, you know, Mustang. Yes. Limited, you know, they go. The brands go down the line, and models go down within within the brands. Uh, it's not something that necessarily even needs to be explained, but I think when we talk about it like this a little bit, it helps to kind of just reinforce Hope that, so. you know, Coldessi is the Ford, yes. you know, and so on and so forth. Actually, so it's like the Maserati. The Maserati. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. The Tesla. Uh, so today we are talking about taking control of no yeah. and how to win every time. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a very enticing title. Yeah, it is. An, it's an enticing tile, uh, title, a uh, tile too. Um, so... What does this mean? All right. Uh, Give your example. Like, sure. Why are we doing this? Sure. Well, a customer comes in. Um, they've got a great idea for a hat, a shirt, a cap, but something that they want printed or customized. Mm -hmm. And uh, it might even seem like it's a good idea. You know, on on when you're just thinking about it. Oh yeah, that would be cool. That yeah. would look good. Um, but maybe it's just impossible to do, or maybe you're yeah. not willing to do that. Maybe you don't own equipment that can do that, or um, or you don't even know how to do it, even though yeah, you know you have your the equipment, equipment. Yeah. to do it. So these are all things, and what we don't want is you don't want to just abandon the idea, give up. Right. You want to win. You want your customer to win and you to win, so we figure out how to take this concept that initially is a, a gut reaction no, no and turn it into a win for you and a win for your customer and it's going to take a little bit of thought and a little bit of work but once you've got it dialed into your business it's not hard yeah it's all about really the way you respond to the request mm -hmm. you know so um that example that you gave earlier when we were talking about this idea of someone coming in and wanting a vinyl design mm -hmm. um, on a blanket and there were parts of the design that just wouldn't work because they were too small for that blanket. Yeah. They wouldn't stick to the substrate. So what do you say in a situation like that? No, I'm sorry, I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, no, have you a can't nice do day. that, you know, nice day. Yeah. Or you're just brash about, if you want me to do the work, I'm gonna have to do it the way I wanna do it, yeah. you know? And, and none of these ways are a good way to respond. So we've thought of four different things. Yep and how to handle all four of these situations. So uh, strap in, because <laughs> it's going to be a wild ride on this one. Yeah, I want to actually um, expand on the first one, because you know your point about, number one, is your customer asks for something that can't be done. So your done. customer asks for something that literally can't be done. Yes. It's, it's, it's the impossible. Yeah. So let's, let's yeah, go ahead. Tell, yeah, so. And I want to differentiate between that and it's not a good idea, right? So what okay. we're talking about is something that physically can't be done. So uh, I'm an embroiderer and I would like you to make my design, you know, uh, 10 millimeters above the cap brim. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, okay. Right? You don't want to say that. I mean, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You could deconstruct the cap completely sew it out and then stitch it back together, not, it's not practical. Yeah, it's not, not a good practical. Idea. And I think that's really what we mean by the can't be done. Yeah. So the two examples that um, we wrote down were, um, they want five hats with embroidery on the bill yeah. and their budget's 10 bucks a piece. Right. Okay, that it's basically just not gonna happen anywhere, period. Yeah. That's just, it's just, it's, it's an impossible task to ask them for one, um, 
you know, it's just, you can't embroider on the bill. If there is embroidery on the bill, it's done ahead of time in the factory. And you're not going to get 10 made for 10 bucks a piece. You're right. not, for $100, you're not going to get that done. A second example is um, they want a DTG print that glows in the dark neon pink on a moisture wicking t-shirt. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, there's not neon colors for DTG. There's right. not glow in the dark neon colors. Right. And then you're also not putting DTG ink on a moisture wick tee. Right. They're not really, so none of these things are compatible. Yeah. The reason to think about this one, um, what I like about this one is it's actually the simplest to solve. Okay. Because they're not going to go somewhere else and get it. It gets more complicated mm. if you know someone else can make this. Yeah. Right? If you know that it's available, you don't own the equipment or you can't do it or all the other things we're going to talk about. Yeah. But if you know that they're basically not going to go anywhere on the world and find this, yeah. this is um, this is an easy thing to do. Yeah. So but, but the but the interesting question is is, you know, do you think that the customer will still continue to go, even if you describe that it's mm -hmm. impossible, and tell them why, like, this is the way I want it. I'm going to go find someone who's going to do it anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I th that's a really good point. And this is just where your skill on being a trusted advisor and an mm -hmm. expert, trustworthy, um, it's just somebody that when they, when you, everyone knows this, you go to the store and go to buy something and you go to buy new running shoes and the person there says, you really don't want these kinds of shoes for running because yep. of the arch and all this stuff. And you listen to them and you think one of two things, full of crap yeah. or damn, this person knows what they're talking about. Right, right, right. So be the person that's damn, they know what they're yeah. talking about. So explain to them why. Um, talk to them about like in the example of the the embroidering on the brim of a cap. Yeah. You know, maybe take a cap out and say, actually, I get this question all the time. So yeah. start with empathizing. Good answer. You know, don't start with, you're an idiot. Start right. with, I understand why you're asking it. See how hard this is. You know, imagine trying to get a needle through that. It'd break, right? Yeah. You know, so you can't do it. And actually this and this. And actually, I know you've seen it. I've seen one. I saw yeah. a friend of mine went to, you know, this theme park the other day and they got, you know. They got the design that comes oh, off the top and onto the brim. Yeah, awesome. and it looks freaking cool. Yeah. Let me tell you how they do that. Yeah. They sew on a piece of fabric in the factory and they sew on a ton of these things. They're making like a thousand at a time. Yeah. And then they build the hat around that design. And each one of those is handmade by yeah. somebody, but you know when you're uh, when you're a brand like Ford and you're putting these into you know Ford uh, fan stores, yeah. you know they're putting them all over in the country. They're ordering ten thousand at a time, so they're right. making them at an affordable price. Yeah. Plus that hat was probably thirty or forty bucks. Right. You but know? for you and me to do one like this, yeah. You know what we'd have to do is cut this hat apart. Yeah. You know and start that process all over again, which you know. It's not something that either yeah. one of us is Yeah, gonna, it's not realistic and, and it's really time consuming and expensive. And it really only works when you've got a factory designed to make these things. Yeah, so I like the alternative here because you've got two things to work with. You've got the idea that they want something with five hats mm -hmm. and they've got $10 each. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could go with, listen, I just explained to you why we can't do that, you know. Um, let me show you what we can do. Yeah. Like with your budget of $10, you know, we can do this. Yeah, we can you know? do, like add this really, it's an inexpensive I've got a marker cap. in the back. Yeah, I can marker. draw on the bill yeah, for Yeah, puff you. paint. <laughs> puff paint. But maybe, so you just start to offer them alternatives after you understand that what they want, they're just not going to get anywhere. I don't want you to waste your time. I don't yeah. want you to go chasing, chasing dreams. Here's your options. Right. You know, we could do this. Um, I can do heat transfer vinyl on the bill, maybe, yep. if you've got, you know, the ability to do that in your shop. Um, or you could just say, let's just skip the bill, you yeah. know, and go ahead and just put it on the side. And then what you wanted on the bill, let's put that in the back of the cap. Yeah. And then in regards to the price, start to explain it. Find out why the budget's 10 bucks. Maybe it's just an idea they had because their friend said they got hats made for 10 bucks and there was literally no story behind what that yeah. meant. Um, so you say, no, actually for this and this, all of a sudden you come through. What ha should happen at the end of that conversation is a thing, just like when you're at the shoe store. The person tells you don't buy those shoes for running. Right. You believe they know what they're talking about. Yep. They say big words about foot muscles that you didn't understand <laughs> what they mean. And then all of a sudden you're like, sure. Well, I guess I better get these then. 200 bucks. Why not? You know? <laughs>
and then, uh, but yeah. that's that's how you want it, the goal of think of this conversation is to stop them from shopping for this stuff that yeah. you know is basically um, uh, not reasonable to get. Yeah, and get them to sit down with you and yeah. continue down the path of what they can get. Yeah, and because this is this is number one and out of our four, mm -hmm. I also want to say that these are. I want to reframe the conversation, not that somebody's coming in and interrupting your day mm -hmm. with something that is improbable or impossible. It's not your everyday request. Mm -hmm. um, it would be very easy just to say, no. Yes. We don't mm -hmm. do that. And the point is, instead of going what through Mark Vila just described or in saying something, you know, let's figure out what we can do with your budget or with a hat, you know, things like that. Um, the, the, the important thing to remember is that two things. You already paid to have that customer come in the door. Yeah, we, right? you, 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 you talk about that a lot. Yeah, it's, it's man. It's really you, important you've to already, think about. You've already written a check, whether it's for your labor and getting to know people or ads or trade shows or building the sign or, or something. Or just the years you've spent owning your business That's that right. people will walk in or call yeah. you. That yeah. customer is worth X number of dollars. You paid Y number of dollars for it. Your real job is to, you know, bridge the gap between those numbers. Yeah. If they're calling you, you've already spent money on them. So don't look at them as an interruption. Look at them as an opportunity to figure out how you can solve their problem. Yeah. Hey, God so, bless you if people can call you up and you can just say no yes. and hang up on them and have enough money. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, you like, don't want to do that. You don't, you don't, you don't even have to listen to, to this podcast. You've won. <laughs> you haven't listened to this podcast, so You've we're won. not talking Yeah, to so the point is, that I, I want to be clear. This is two things. You know, this I love your opportunity mindset. Yep. That's what's part of it. And then the way of handling this to turn it into... Um, a negative because they're going to be sad you said no yeah yeah and turn it into something exciting and that just takes a little bit of practice it's about your enthusiasm about being the expert and then spinning that around and being excited about no you know we can do this will look great you're going to love it I, I like that if you have a pen handy okay um, and you are in your place of business just write down um, let's figure out what we can do or let's mm -hmm. talk about what we can do and put that by the phone so when you're about to say no, you can look at that and say, no, we need to figure out what we can do. Yeah. You know, not not where you can go. Yeah, yeah, we, let's figure out what we can do that'll be great. Tell me, ask them a question and yeah. let them talk, Give kind of give them the power to feel that they're, you know, they're in control of the conversation still even though you're telling them no. Yeah. What, what's this for? Yeah. What are you doing it for? What's the, is it for an event? You know, tell me a little bit about the job, why yeah. you're getting it done. Be, be a little bit of a salesperson. Yeah. So it sounds great. All right. So the next one. Yeah. Number two, your customer asks for something your equipment cannot do. Yeah. Not, so the, the stuff that you, you, if you, if the customer's asking for something that you, the equipment that you own can't mm -hmm. do, then you probably have not spent enough money with Coldessi. <laughs> I think that's probably it, because we can do almost anything. Yeah, al almost. almost you'll anything. still find something. You'll though. find something. But usually you'll bump up into that uh, can't be done stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what are these things somebody might say, um, I want an all over print on this, you know, fishing shirt, yes. meaning like the the design goes through the sleeve and the shirt all yep. the way wraps really around the popular. back. Um, it is something that people have seen out there. It's in the stores. Um, chances are you don't have equipment that does that because yes. this usually invite like they roll print the material yeah. and they're so, cut and sew and that, you, so, you probably so, don't have that. So that's it. If you didn't know, most of those shirts, it's a sublimation process and they print a pattern on an entire commercial roll of fabric um, that's a poly and then they send it to the pattern department right where they where they cut out the pattern for the shirt and they assemble the shirt using fabrics with that pattern on it yeah that's yeah, the way well, the vast majority of these are done yeah well, i've seen this one thing where they actually print the shape of the shirt yeah and then they cut that shape out and sew it together yep. so anyway you don't have that probably right. you yeah. probably aren't a a print cut and, and sew shop. Mm -hmm. um, or they, I want embroidered caps. You don't even own an embroidery machine yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so these are two simple things. One of them's, you know, just a, a seem, seemingly simple service like embroidery, but you don't do it yet. And others, a more complex service uh, where 
it's just it's gonna be really hard for them to find somebody, but somebody will do it if they look. Yeah. If they look, they can find it. So yeah. what do you do? Um, again, you don't want to send the customer away. All right. Um, I think you've got three choices here. Okay. Go All right, I'll give you what you got. Um, I'll read them out and then I'll let you explain them after I've thrown that in sure, your Sure, I'm good at that. <laughs> um, you send them away, right? That's yep. option one. Yep. Can't do that, sorry, thanks for calling. Uh, that is really not an option, right. but it is. You could do that. Um, two is what we said before. Talk to them about the things you can do yep. instead, except this is about your equipment. Um, it's not about impossible. Where the impossible, they can't call anybody and get it. You've got to just be the last yeah, person they right, call. Right. Um, this one, somebody does have equipment that can do this. You still want them to stop and yes. talk to you. So talk to them about things you can do instead. And then option three, it, or I'm sorry, there's actually four things. I take that yeah. back. I didn't update my four when I added the fourth one. Um, outsource the job. Yep. Option four, refer the job out. Right. Give it to somebody else. That and you well, let, let's talk about the differences at the end. Yeah, sure. Okay. So when you say send them away and it's not an option, you know, the, the conversation goes, you are a DTG printer, mm -hmm. right? You do custom printed t-shirts, 100% guarantee people are going to ask you for embroidery. And you go, no, I'm sorry, I don't do that. Did you still want to order that those hundred shirts mm -hmm. for the extended family reunion? Uh, I really want the hats too, so I'm gonna find somebody that will do both. Yeah, you know, um, or you just say, nah, I don't do hats, and then hang up and you go about your business, never knowing that they would have placed that hundred piece order. Yeah. So um, it's really never an option, keeping in mind that you paid for that person to call. You gave them money to call you um, to say no, a flat no. Yeah, right? I don't. I don't like it at all. And and the next three things you can do make it so you never have to use that option. Yeah, you know, there you, you, you never like have that. to do that option. So um, the next one is talked about. Talk to them about things you can do. Yeah. Right. So how how would you handle that? They call you up. You you can do vinyl. You can do DTG. You know, you could do some hard substrate stuff. And they call yeah. you up and they say. I want all this stuff. I also want, you know, 20 embroidered hats. Yeah, that, you know? that, that's cool. I said, you know what? I think that's a great idea. Tell you what I can do is I can do a glitter vinyl logo on the caps. Mm -hmm. Or I can do a, um, a vinyl transfer on the caps with something really similar. How would that be? Yeah. You know, um, did you, were you interested in metallic? Yeah. You know, things that you are not going to easily get with embroidery. Yeah. So that's that's conversation number one. Yeah, I like that right there. And you say, actually, what I can do, a bunch of my customers have been doing this thing. We're actually using um, a heat transfer vinyl material. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, yeah. um, but we can get a really vibrant color. We can pick the, pick the color that you want. It'll really stand out. We could do multiple colors if you want to do. Mm -hmm. It looks really sharp. It's a very cool modern look to a cap. Embroidery looks great, but let me. This is a really cool look too. Yeah. Can I show you some? Yeah. You know. There you go. Um, and now you're you're kind of flipping this switch to them that oh maybe I, maybe yeah I do something this newer, fresher, or more interesting. Yeah, and you know almost everybody does embroidered hats. Yeah. You should see what I can do with vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know you're you're. So you're definitely not saying no. You're going back to that thing where I don't have the equipment for that. So in order to keep the business, let's see what we can do. Yeah, you're and right? it's great. You bring you you keep the work in house for yourself, uh, and in the end, the cust you know you're going to make a great design. Yep. It's going to look really cool. Your customer's going to love it, and you both win. Yeah, maximum profit option yep. right there. So um, the next is uh, outsourcing the job. Yeah, and that is you have a pre-established connection. Right? You don't want to make your first phone call to an embroidery shop that you've never talked to before. Say, hey, I'd like to send you a customer or, hey, um, can you do some wholesale caps for me? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have that relationship in advance. But um, yeah, you can, you can say, great, you can just take the order. Um, you can price it out and then you can farm it out to somebody that you've already yeah. got a relationship that has the machines. And so a uh, tip right now is if you feel, if you are thinking about this and you're like, I wouldn't even know if I, what to do. If I got to this point, mm -hmm. right? Um, start today by starting to find those relationships. So whatever you do, find shop or shops that can provide you with an outsourced version of everything yeah. you can't do. Yep. Whether it's uh, heat transfer, vinyl transfers, or digital printed transfers, embroidery, 
screen printing, signs, Happen, awards, happens engraving. Every, every day in the customer apparel startups Facebook group, somebody posts, is there any anyone that can do 10 shirts for me with the DFX transfer, digital heat FX, white toner transfer? Is there anybody that can do uh, 20 hats for me, Richardson caps, mm -hmm. on a short-term basis? You know, all of those things should happen in advance. Ask those questions now so you'll know who says yes next time and you'll have that built in place. There's a great community of people that have all these pieces of equipment that are ready to outsource. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they would welcome that work but you need to know that there are those people out there so you don't have to say no to the customer standing in front of you. Yeah, and I think it's great to start building those relationships now. Do yeah. your best you can, you know, make some phone calls, contact people online, whatever it is, and be just be just be forthcoming about it. I I, I always think in most all of these things just a straight up honest simple yeah. thing is the best is the best approach. You call up an engraving shop. Yep. Hey, you guys do engraving? Yeah. Um, I own an embroidery shop. Um, I don't. I actually don't have any engraving business for you now, but right. I anticipate that with the customers I'm going to be reaching out to, I'm going to get some questions yeah. about this, and I'd love to see if you have some sort of a wholesale option where if one of my customers is ready for some engraving, or maybe I can sell them some engraving yep. if I see an opportunity. Um, that can I can I send it to you. Too. Do you have um, some, and you might just find that, yeah, we actually have a few people that do business like this. I have some pricing I can email you, yeah. and boom, you're in. Could be um, easy. It might be a little more complicated. Oh, I really don't do that. I've been thinking about that. Or they might just tell you a hard no, and you hang up and call the next person. Yeah, but now if you do that in advance, now you have a menu of services that you can offer your customers yeah. and a way to get those orders fulfilled, which is great for you. So the number of times that you have to do the um, let's figure out what we can do, mm -hmm. you know, goes down yeah. because, oh, I also need pens. Okay, cool. Let me take care of that for you. There you go. Start making a list of all the things you can imagine your customers would ask for. Yep. Don't make it too crazy, but make it real, what you feel is realistic. I would say pick 10 things yeah. you don't do, you know, um, make that list and make it a point to check off one a week for 10 weeks. Boom. A 10 week period, you've got 10 places to outsource to and you're yep. just waiting for some business and maybe you'll be inspired the next time you talk to a customer to even offer that. Yeah, that's a separate I conversation. I love that. So, um, so, so this one I had some questions about. Okay. So the, the situation number three is your customer asks for something that you won't do. Oh, we have one more thing to mention. Oh, we do. Refer, oh, refer the, job. the job. Refer the job. Shh. It's because it's my least favorite. It's okay. It is. Really? It's, it's not the most favorite, favorite, but it is, it's real. It's realistic. You, you can do it. Yeah, it's realistic in the real world. It's not my favorite thing either, but you might just have um, somebody who's asking for something that's really, maybe just the engraving thing is a little too far out for you. You yeah. don't understand the materials. You can't ask, you can't answer the questions. Yep. Um, you're struck, you've maybe even tried to do referrals on this and you mess up, you keep messing up that you say, you know what, for now I want to, Pass it off. I'll just send this to somebody Eventually, else. Eventually, I want to get wholesale on this because I think you should try to come back and wholesale everything. Yeah. But you're going to pass it off. It's got to be um, a trusted two-way street relationship. Yeah. Um, it's the reason why in our industry why it's harder to do is because you can resell basically anything. Right. Right. If you're in the real estate business, uh, you've got to have a licenses to do all this stuff. Yeah. So you've got to pass it to the mortgage broker. You yep. can't just write the deal yourself. Or the the guy looking for a house in Georgia, you're in Florida, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but in our industry, you can wholesale pretty much anything back yep. and forth. But if you have to, you have to have a trusted relationship with somebody who's not going to steal your business, who's going to be reciprocal back to you yes. and refer business to you, and um, and. If you've got that type of thing, but I just every time you do this, there is the risk because we sell embroidery equipment to people who I've been I've been referring uh, embroidery yeah, business absolutely. out, and I'm, I'm ready to buy a machine. Yeah. So the problem is, just because they don't do it now, doesn't mean that well, they, they won't, won't do, do it, it in, in the future, future and yeah. and that could take some of your customers away. And then it's a battle of who does your customer like more now yeah, to do but, the embroidery. But it is still a safer bet than just sending someone down the street. It, absolutely. Because first of all, you have furthered your relationship with that customer. Mm -hmm. You're not really saying no, you're saying no but. Mm -hmm. No, but I know somebody great. I know somebody that I've had work done before with. 
So you're still maintaining that idea. You can trust me to take care of you. Mm -hmm. You know, here's somebody that I trust to take care of you too. Yeah, I, I, I can't even count, and I'm sure you too, that um, how many times in our careers somebody says, uh, Mark, I know you don't do this, but yeah. can you tell oh, me yeah. who does? And that means that as soon, as soon as you hear that, that means that they trust you to be the advisor. Absolutely. They, and if they're, if you always give them an answer, then anytime they want something, they're like, "Let's." I can go to, all, I can make all these phone calls, but if I just call Mark, he's gonna know. He's gonna tell me where to go. I had, I had get a it done. twenty or thirty minute uh, Facebook chat with somebody that um, was disappointed that the equipment that they owned that they did not buy from us. Oh, okay. You know, um, but still came to us looking for some advice because mm -hmm. they needed something better. And the answer ended up being a, a large format kind of print cut machine that we don't sell. Yeah. You know, but I'm happy to, you know, talk to them about that and recommend a company rather than an individual that sells that material. Yeah. You know, be, but only because I couldn't figure out how to print a 50 inch wide sign with a, um, a digital heat FX 95. Okay. That's, that's the only reason. But, so, you know, at least it was an option. Yeah, and I think that's great because the chances are of that person having a question of what to do next, they're going to come to you yep. because they know you're going to give them the real answer. Yep. And uh, you've got, if you're that person, it's just going to turn, it, and the, that's a long-term gameplay, but it will make you money in the long run. Yeah, I agree. So the next one, you've got lots of questions about this. I one. do, and it's your customer asks for something you will not do. You mm -hmm. won't do it. Yeah. Um, my question is, you've got a Bible passage here. Why wouldn't you do that, Mark? Uh, well, uh, because it's a 350-word Bible passage they want on the back of a shirt. Yes. And they want it in a quarter-inch font. Yes. And it, you cut heat transfer vinyl. <laughs> okay, so this is like this is a, a forty-five to an hour-long weeding project that's bound to your picking out the O, um, picking out the center of an O, <laughs> and, and you need, pull out the whole O. And they need fifty shirts, or and they need fifty shirts. of them, and um, and it's the pastor of the local church, so you know you you don't you, you, you You're can't say a uh, hundred bucks a piece, right. you know, um, because you want to you want to you know you want to uh, give them a solid deal. Yep. So you're just not going to do this. Yeah. Um, it's unrealistic. Another is um, they want a digital transfer that's a big giant block 11 by 17. Yeah. You're not going to do that. It's not going to feel good. It's not yep. going to wash well. It's, it's just not a viable option. Um, you're, you're not going to put that type of, of uh, product out there. Right. Um, or they, want, uh, they have a thin moisture wick t-shirt and they want a 12 inch by 12 inch fully filled embroidery design on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be the most uncomfortable it, it, thing to wear. It's almost, it's almost like you won't do it because it should not be done. Yeah. Like no one should do it. Yeah. It's not that you're saying, no, I'm never gonna do anything like that. Yeah. It's that no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's right? like you shouldn't do it or, or um, and we'll, we'll get into some of those in a minute here. Okay. This, this is where um, it can get tough because Technically, you can do it. Yep. Um, will it look good? Nah, -uh. maybe. I mean, maybe. I guess it depends on the example. Maybe. But you're leaning no because you're saying you won't do it. Right. Um, or can you charge what you want? Yeah. You know, for that 350 word verse on the back with quarter. You know, uh, can you charge 50 bucks a shirt to make it worth your while? Yeah. You know, no. You know. So in all these can you know in all these scenarios, it's like you can do it. The machine can do it. You're just not going to do it because it's not going to look good. It shouldn't be done, or you can't get the money. That's what that's it'll, it'll wash right off. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, there's all know. these reasons why you're not going to do it because ultimately that's going to hurt your um, your uh, reputation in long long run. What you don't want to get into the mindset of doing is that's what they want. That's what I'm giving them. You know, um, it's it's funny. It reminds me of the uh, the DTG M2 printer and printing on polyester. Okay. On black mm -hmm. polyester, mm -hmm. like on dark colors. Um, so that's something that you can do, right? So you can put, so if you didn't know, one of the, um, one of the properties of a direct garment printer is it uses water-based ink yeah. um, that does not adhere well to um, synthetic fabrics. Things that are designed to repel water. Repel water, right. So it'll do fine like with a white polyester shirt but it went, when it gets into a dark or a black shirt, um, it has some problems with the white ink adhering. Mm -hmm. So um, what 
what we you could you can print it on there though, but it, it'll wash off quickly. It doesn't wear well, right? It'll look spectacular for a very short period of time. So there are things that you can do that are very complicated to make it last longer. But our stand is, you know, when we talk to people about it, it says, yeah, sure, you can do it, but don't. Yeah. You shouldn't do it. If you're doing, if your goal is to print 100% black polyester shirts as your business, we will not sell you an M2 mm -hmm. because you should not do it, right? So you're, you're kind of doing that same thing for your customers and figuring out things that you won't do it because they shouldn't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and these are all things that are just a matter of you're not going to. So how do you say yes to this? Um, I mean, the answer is obvious. You go back to this is what I can do. Yeah. You know, um, well, I really want to put it all. I really want to do this big embroidery job on the back of this. Well, OK, let's think about that. Um, you mentioned why did you want embroidery? Yeah. I just think it looks really good. OK. Yeah. What does. if what if I. I've got a really interesting solution that we can do here. So I can take the artwork that you have and I can send it out to a really good graphic artist and I can request them to give the art an embroidered look a little bit. And then we can take it, Clever. we can print it out on a digital transfer, put mm -hmm. it on the back, still be full color. You'll get all yeah. the cool colors and it'll make it, give it a little bit of an embroidered look. Um, and it's a great deal because if I, we were to do embroidery, there's two things for you, that big design that's going to take about two hours a piece on my machine. Right. Probably longer, realistically, but um, it's going to be two hours a piece. Blah blah blah. Doing some math. I mean, you don't you don't want to spend a hundred bucks piece in these shirts. Right. All right. It's not going to be comfortable. All that embroidery on the thing. It's, it's fine. Heavy. Fine for a leather jacket. Yep. Not fine for this thin t-shirt for going yeah. fishing. Um, so we'll get the art done. The art will be a little bit of money because you want the embroidered look. Yeah. So let's say it's going to cost about a hundred bucks to do that. Yeah. But then the shirts are only going to be this. Boom! And you've got this whole scenario you gave out to your customer. Yeah. It'll it'll look good. It'll wear good. Uh, it'll be profitable for yeah. you. Man, it, and it's exactly the same because in the DTG direct to garment printer situation, we answer it exactly the same way. So if you do want to do like mostly dark. Um, performance wear polyester garments, you know, let's talk about the digital heat effects line of transfer printers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's less expensive. It will do any of the fabrics. It's not the same as DTG, but it'll make an amazing image. Let me show you that. Yeah. And that's that's the appropriate response. You're not saying no. Mm -hmm. You know, say, eh, you shouldn't really do You're that. You're saying this is what, yeah, we, can this is what we can do. And uh, and a goal here again is just like the other ones. You want them to stop making the phone calls, stop shopping around, yep. and realize that you're the trusted expert. You're telling them doing this is really shouldn't be done, um, or it's the price you know you're willing to pay. Um, you're willing to do it for is not good. Now there's something else that I mentioned here when I put a note is maybe the solution is outsourcing it. Yeah, okay. And this too. So maybe you, and the reason why is that 350 word Bible passage they wanted on the back of a t-shirt. Yeah. That's not that unreasonable to want a bunch of text on the back of a shirt. Right. Right? I mean, we see that all the time. Yep. Typically though, it's done with a process that's good for that. Right. So maybe it's DTG printed. It would or maybe it's a transfer. DTG. Yeah. It would look or great or, as a transfer. Yeah. Maybe it's screen printed yeah. because they want 300 of them yep. in one black Black shirt, white text on the back. I want 350 of them. And maybe you outsource it to a screen printer. There's lots yeah. of reasons yep. to do this. So maybe outsourcing is a solution. You need to kind of figure that out with with what you know. Yeah. Because you're the expert. It's true. And and you do have to like put yourself out there as being more of an expert than your customers. Mm -hmm. And figure out how to talk to them about that. Because we are starting to get I'm I'm starting to hear about more and more people that are asking for a DTG shirt. Yeah. Or they're asking mm -hmm. for a um, an Oki transfer shirt. You know, they're they've got these specifics, like they're becoming more technically aware of how things are created. You've got to be able to talk about that. Yeah. And why this thing is is a better idea. Yeah. And and now in regards to what the what the customer is asking for something, and you yeah. won't do it, or or whatever it might be, um, you've got a good point. You know they're asking for a DTG print, you yeah. know, and 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 you know it's not going to work on that shirt or whatever yep. it might be. You've got to be the expert here, but also you have to the this mindset of like, well, this is what my customer wants. I have to give them this because yeah. this is what they asked for. Okay, the chances of your customer being um, Coca Cola, 
with a 19 page brand standards document that they deliver to you yeah. that if you can't meet every single thing on these 19 pages, corporate won't approve you to do. I mean, yeah. Okay. That's that's a different Zero. scenario, yeah. okay? Um, that's a different scenario. The chances are is you're doing business for a, a local business or a school or whatever it is, and they have some certain standards maybe that they want to uphold, but when they come to you and they say, I want this design log you know, done here, and they want the font really tiny on embroidery, and you know it's not going to look good, Yeah. then you've got to be the expert and turn around and explain to them and say, okay, I realize that's your logo and you don't deviate from that. But right. let me explain to you. Um, when we're doing this logo on the left chest, look how far away we're standing here talking. We're about four feet apart. If that was a 0.2 inch font in embroidery, would you, you be able to read you it? can't read it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And then it's not going to look too good because embroidering, I mean, thread is only so small. Yeah. So if we raise up that size of the font just a bit, yeah. and we just deviate from kind of your what your normal logo would look like normally, you'll be able to read it, it'll look really clean, it'll look crisp. I'm telling you, you're gonna impress people it'll with how good it looks. Better. Because if you go to the other if you go to the other shop who said that they would do it, yeah. they will do it, because I can do it too. Yeah. It's not gonna it's not gonna read well. You're gonna have to be six inches away to be able to read it. We run into that all the time. Yeah. So go at this with it. Don't just feel like you have to do something because your customer asked for it or kind of semi-demanded it. Yep. Try to talk them through it. Yeah. And then if they're completely unreasonable about the concept, then you've got to figure out, is this job right for my business? Right. You know, um, you, that's, you just have to do that job by job. You yeah, know, like, and then you refer them to somebody you don't like. Yeah, <laughs> because remember, if you do something and you know it's not going to look good or it's their not going to perform well, not gonna be happy. they're not going to be happy. You're going to get the bad reputation because they're not going to say, Oh, yeah, yeah, I realize I asked for you to do DTG on this. Yeah. And you told me that I shouldn't. Yeah. But I did it anyway, and it lasts for three washes. Yeah, they're, oh, they're not going to go to the... the Vice principal orders all these shirts. Yeah. They don't look good. They're not going to go to the principal and say the embroiderer told me not to do that, and I right. told and I, and I did and I anyway. told her to do it anyway. Yeah, um, and that's why no yeah. nobody's going to say that. They're going to pass the buck to you. This embroiderer is that why we get calls all the time yelling at us when UPS is late. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not us. Right? We're not delivering the packages. We yeah. shipped it on time. The UPS truck ran out of gas. Yeah, there you go. But guess the UPS doesn't call us to fault. apologize either. I know. It's crazy. So um, we have one more to do. We do. It's a good one, too. Your customer asks for something that you can't do. Yeah. Your equipment can do it. It can be done. Yeah. It should be done that way. It should be done. It would look good. It would look awesome. Yeah. You just don't know how. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, right? that hurts. I mean, that one hurts. Um, because this is typically new for um, for somebody new into the business. Yeah, there's a lot for you to learn. Um, you've never printed on this. You've never worked with this material. You've never done this type of you've art. You've never seen an embroidery machine before. Training. Yeah, um, they you you've been embroidering for um, three four months. Three four months, and, and and a motorcycle gang comes and wants a, a club. A Please. club, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry, the I, social clubs that ride motorcycles. Yes, I retract that statement. I rescind. They're wearing, they're wearing their cuts. I disavow that See, statement. See, I knew that. <laughs> and uh, and they want direct embroidery on the back of a hundred cuts, a hundred mm -hmm. leather jackets or vests. Yeah. You know, um, no, you don't want to do direct embroidery onto a leather leather jacket if you just got your machine. Yeah, you need some help. You know, yeah. you need to learn, you know, um, so what do you do in that situation? Somebody comes to you, you know, you can, it can be done with what you do with your equipment. You know, how do you handle and somebody it, that comes in and It asks? stinks when it's a really big opportunity, Yeah, you know, too. But it, it could be just as simple as, you know, they want hats and you've been practicing and kind of been busy making polo shirts and woven dress shirts. Yeah. You just haven't even gotten around to really learning the hats yet. So, um, there's a couple things that I wrote down here, and I took a lot of time to think about this because I think this is complicated. Okay. Um, so this is a time when you might think like, I'm gonna buckle down, I'm gonna learn this, I'm gonna get the job, I'm gonna make them happy. Hey, it's the perfect time because yeah. somebody's writing me a check to learn. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? It's the perfect time. 
you have to be Smart. careful yeah. here because this is going to give you gray hair, high blood pressure. You're going to lose a customer. You're going to upset some people. You're going to yell at some really nice people in our support yeah, department. Yeah, the freaking nicest people in our support department. And people just <laughs> no, yell at really them over are. this stuff. You took on the job you can't do and told them you'd deliver it tomorrow, right? Yeah. But this is a real lesson to learn here because... You know, everyone has strengths and weaknesses. You know, some people are gonna be great at learning graphic arts. The embroidery machine is just gonna hum and sing to them yeah. and they're gonna understand it. Yeah, yeah. Others are gonna be slower to learn it and get frustrated. That's fine, we all have things we're really good at and we're not so good at. And then if you practice, you get better at the things that you're not good at. Another one of my favorite posts in the Avance um, Facebook group is, oh, I'm having such a hard time with caps. I don't do caps anymore. And somebody will always post, really? I just did 150 of them Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, same yeah. machine, mm -hmm. right? So um, you've got to, uh, let's see here. Let me see what I wrote. I wrote, so I wrote some here. Uh, okay. Here I am. Sorry, my pages got mixed up. So um, what do you do here? For one, you've got to make sure that you've got, um, well, actually, take it back. You could say yes and outsource the job. Yep. Find somebody, you you know of people who are experts in this industry, you know people who can embroider the caps or who are really good at working with a particular material or, or are great graphic artists. Somebody comes come to you and say, design a logo for me and embroider it on a shirt. Yep. You don't know how to design logos. Yep. Don't sit there in the computer, try to mess with it, come up with something bad, you outsource it. You hire somebody who's you, a graphic artist. You go to coldse-graphics.com. Yeah, there you go, and there you, you go. And you get a logo done. Yeah, first time anyone's hearing about this, really, you officially. You know, just some sliding it <laughs> in there. Um, but yeah, you go to a, a place like coldse-graphics.com. Yep. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, um, and you go and get some conceptual art created, and you get a logo created that looks awesome, yeah. that looks great. Now you can digitize it or get it digitized and put it onto a shirt yeah. and the job's done. Yep. Um, you know, or the other option you could do is if you don't outsource it or you just hire somebody to do the embroidery or hire, even though you have, a, um, you know, you have a, a, a digital printing machine, you order transfers online, yep. you know, whatever it might be, you figure out how to do it. Um, the other option you could do is you can learn while somebody pays you to do it. Yep. But you've got to be careful about two things. You need to have enough time to learn how to do this. Yeah. And you don't know how long it's going to take you because yep. everyone has different skill sets. Yep. So this no rush jobs allowed, yep. period. If you don't know how to do it and you've never done it before and you've got an opportunity to take on a job and they need it as a rush job, the chances of you learning it, perfecting it, making it, selling it, delivering it to a happy customer are very slim. Yeah. More than likely, you are going to upset yourself and your customer. Yeah. And then they're not going to come back. Agreed. Okay. Um, so you've got to have no rush jobs. You've also got to have an exit plan. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what. First, before the exit plan, yeah. you have to have plenty of blanks to make mistakes on. Oh, you've got to have extras to mess up. 100%. Yeah. You will never promise me right now. Say it with me. Yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will never take a first-time first technique job on a garment or an item that a customer brings me. Oh yeah. That is a not. that is just just set fire to the shirt. <laughs> just do that. You'll save a lot of time. So you've yeah. got to have the blanks available so you can make a bunch of mistakes and it's not going to hurt your customer. Yeah, so that that's a great point. If you're doing hats, you've never done them before. Um, or it's a particular style cap that you've never done and you're yep. concerned it's not going to be hard to do, you got to order three, four extra, yep. five extra, whatever the number is. Have plenty to mess up on. This way you can learn. And make sure you have the time to learn. Yeah. If, if you normally deliver a job in a week, you tell them it's going to be two weeks yeah, but, or, but whatever it is. But I, I love your idea of having the... Uh you know, the, the emergency help or eject yeah. button. Yeah, that pull you this in push. case of emergency. Yeah. You order the hats. You are, um, you mess with them for uh, an hour or two the first day. I'm, all right, got to put them away. I'll mess with it tomorrow. You mess it with for an hour or two the next day. Dang, I'm still not dialing this in. What am I doing wrong? You know, yeah. you mess with them the third day. You're like, all right, I told them two weeks. You know, I know my outsource embroiderer is going to take a week to get the job yeah. done. I'm pushing my limit. I've only got two extra yes. spare days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You call up the embroiderer. You outsource the job. You make less money on it. It looks good. You deliver it to the customer. Happy They're happy. Customer. And they come back again. And hopefully the next time 
you've now got you know a 10 hats handy and when you do have a slow day or some time yeah, yeah, yeah. you start drilling down on practicing those hats again yep. and you dial it in you're proud of yourself this, this is all part of understanding that your job is not to use your embroidery machine okay your, your job is not to figure things out your job is to deliver an amazing product to your customer and make them happy. Mm -hmm. Everything else are just things that you do to, to accomplish that. Yeah, or there are things to do to help you make more money yeah, with your job. Yeah, so, so the, the more that you can do yourself, great, you'll make more money that way. Mm -hmm. But as long as you've got that end goal in mind, the customer's gotta be happy, so don't be late. Mm -hmm. Don't do a poor job. You know, be ready with that easy button. Yeah. You know, somebody that you know can make this happen if you can. Yeah. Right. And the, and you just don't get mad when you have to pull that button. Now, that's the right. other thing is don't let your emotions, you know, um, overtake your ability to do good business. Yes. And that, you know, you're mad, you've you've yelled at your husband or wife, you know, because because it can't get done. You yelled at a support technician. Yeah. You know, Never you've yelled at your blank supplier. Yep. because they tell you they can't get you extra of the, the shirts the next day. You, you know, and you're, you got mad at everybody, you got mad at yourself, and now you call it, and now you're mad, at, now you're mad because you're making less money. Just yeah. calm it all down and just say, I'll, I'll get them next be, time. Be ready to hand, just yeah. be ready to handle it. Yeah. Like if you're ready to handle it, if you're ready to go back to number one, if you're ready to talk to somebody about something that can't be done, mm -hmm. if you're ready to, um, for when your customer asks you something that your equipment can't do, that you can flip them over into something that you can. If you're ready to talk to people about something you won't do, and you're ready to have an emergency plan if you don't know something mm -hmm. that you want to learn and you use this as an opportunity, you just have to be ready to handle that stuff. Yeah. And if you are, you're not going to get mad. You're not going to get angry. You're just going to get stuff done. Yeah. You know. And 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 really, if you do if you do get to pull that emergency switch and get the job done, you get a happy customer. Gosh, like be happy for that. You know, any people out there could have never delivered a single thing to a happy customer. Yeah. Like and, and not just I our do. business, just in period. Yeah. You know, I do. so the fact that you gave something to a customer and they smiled, like that's a win. Yeah. So um, in this particular one though, when it's all said and done. You've learned how to do it, or you practiced it. Maybe you pulled the emergency switch or not. I don't know what you did. Yeah. But then you get to kind of evaluate, you know, do you want to do this kind of work? Um, I like that. How, how long is it going to take you to really master this? Yeah. Um, like maybe it's digitizing. You're trying to learn to digitize. It's and probably digitizing. Yeah. And then you just say, it's, I, I don't like this. Yeah. You know, or the graphic arts. You know what? I, I'm just not a graphic artist. I don't really, it's not fun for me. Yep. And that's kind of. That's one of the things for me. I'm not a graphic artist. It's I, I like messing around a little bit, but it's not really fun for me. Yeah. It's not something I w desire to master one day. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say, whenever it's graphic arts, someone else is gonna do it. Yep. It's cool. That's yeah. fine. You know. But I'm gonna do a bunch of other stuff. Right. I like that. Um, and then also um, the last important one is all the time and effort that's going to take you to master this and be really good at it, really worth it for you, is going to pay off. Yeah. Because if it's not, you know, don't do it as well. So uh, let's finish with some takeaways for this episode. What are they? Okay, sure. <laughs> um, the biggest one I think is that you have to understand that you are the expert, right? When your customer comes to you, they have to understand. You have to just uh, have an aura around you that you are the expert in this stuff and they have to trust you. Yeah, man. That's the number one thing. If you let the customers take control of everything as if they're the expert, yeah. then you you are a slave to them. You know, yeah. you've lost the opportunity to be empowered by a business owner and be an expert and, and enjoy what you do. Yeah, listen, this is one of my favorite things about Cold Essie. Okay. Seriously, right. is that if you get somebody on the other end of the phone, they're a freaking expert. Oh, yeah. Like our people, like our salespeople know more than technicians in some other businesses. Oh, yeah. You know, our, our technicians are the best. So, like, you can pick up the phone. If I have an issue, I go, you know, hey, Sean, the customer has this question. Or, hey, Heath, guy wants to print a DTG on a live cat. Have you ever done that <laughs> <Yeah>. before? <laughs> um, you know, things like that. Like, Knowing that the person that you're talking to is an expert, um, like makes you 
comfortable. Yeah. It makes you want to give them money to make well, things happen. Isn't this how it works with like all these other industries out there? Like you have to imagine like imagine going to like your dentist. Yeah. And they just say um, you have a cavity we should fill it with this special material. It's really good. It fills cavities. Yeah. And you say, just fucking jam a screw in there. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, you would just, you wouldn't say I that. Have, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't say that to your dentist. Yeah. You wouldn't, I'll just stick some gum in there. Yeah. That'll prevent any food from getting yeah, caught yeah. Well, in. Well, I heard, you know? I heard that I could use Trident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, you're I not going to do that. If the same, your air conditioning breaks, the person comes out and says, condenser is bad. We got to replace it. But let me tell you, once we replace that, it's going to pop this uh, capacitor as well. So let's swap them both out. And ice cold AC is going to set you free, yeah. you know? And yeah. you and you trust them, um, or you feel like you're gonna get ripped off. You get a second opinion, but still, you know that they're the expert. Yeah, and you know how they talk to you to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, or make you feel like you want to make that next. Phone if, call. Because if you feel like you're getting ripped off, you're gonna call the next yeah. person. You've got to be the person that sounds like you're not. Let's talk about what we can do. Yeah, I, I had. Um, a friend of mine was making a cake. It was like a wife's or aunt or mom's birthday, and they wanted to do like a grand, a grand cake. You know, three tiers and 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 all this cool art. You know, they wanted to throw like hundred something bucks into this yeah. cake, right? Cool. Like it's a fun idea, right? So they call up the person who was making the cake, and they said, "Well, we you want it this size? We can't do a three tier." Because that third okay. tier, it's not going to hold up well. It's not going to look good. If you try to do it, if you want it three tiered, I recommend doing this size cake. Yep. But that feeds twice as many people, costs twice as much money. But what we can do is we could do a two tier cake and then I could put a cool decoration on the top okay. to make it look like a third tier. Yep. They said yes. They spent the money on it. The cake was freaking amazing. I saw the pictures of it. It was right. really cool. This expert could have just tried to take that third tier, put it on top, and the cake fell apart or didn't look good. Or or have them spend too much money on yeah. the bigger cake to get them. And there. then they're mad, you know, oh, I can't believe yeah. I got ripped off. Why did I look how much extra cake I have yeah. left over. No one's gonna eat this. You know, so um, just think of yourself, you're the expert just like all these other people and the most successful experts out there know how to talk to people, they know how to explain it, yep. they get trusted as a trusted advisor and then at that point in time you could do whatever you want. Yeah, I think the, yep. I think the show notes on this are going to be really valuable. So um, is it, if, they, if they go to custom apparel startups and search for 112, mm -hmm. they'll yeah. find this episode and then you'll... Um, you, could you know, you'll, you'll take a look at the show notes with all the things that we've been talking about in it and print that sucker out and cut them up and put it next to your phone. And yeah. You know, I think these are all good. Yeah, that's, that sounds great. And I think that um, this, this is one of those episodes that when we were talking about it ahead of time, it's really hard to explain in something short that sounds simple. Yeah. But the point is, is that you've got to be the expert and you've got to turn no's into yeses. Yep. And you, the customer is right and should be satisfied, but at the same time, it can't be at the, at the will of your stress and anxiety and, and, and business. Yeah. You know? So I you've agree. got to make sure that, and you can do this. There are so many people out there that are experts in all this stuff and they do amazing work and we see pictures of the things that they do and if you call and talk to them they'll tell yeah. you you know oh yeah i mean customers want stuff all the time i can't do or won't do or my machines can't do but i get the business a lot yep there you go you know and that's a fact so yeah, i like that hey listen before we sign off i just wanted to mention for all you guys whenever you're listening to this episode if it's before the end of 2019 okay we have tons of stuff that that are going to be going on um, between now and about January 15th. So tons of stuff, lots of announcements. I want to make sure that you're plugged into Coldesi and the Custom Apparel Startups family. So if you're not a member of the Custom Apparel Startups Facebook group, go join. Mm -hmm. If you're not on any of the email lists from any of our various brands, um, come, come talk to us. That sounds okay. good. Please do that. Yeah, and if you're listening to this a year from now, the chances are is that there's probably still a bunch of big announcements. You know, and, and, cool and you things. already own four of the things that we're yeah, going to talk um, about. Yeah, because we're, we, we follow all the stuff that we talk about, we do here. 
yeah. some, to some degree. So we're always moving and changing and growing. So keep in contact with us. Thanks for listening. Yep. Okay, everybody. This has been Mark Stevenson from Coldesi. And Mark Vila from Coldesi. You guys have a great never say no business. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs>